Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining Dragon Trail for the May edition of our monthly webinar series. Today, we're honored and delighted to be joined by leading Chinese online travel platform, Mafangwa, to introduce you to China's Generation Z travelers. This generation has already been a driving force behind China's domestic tourism recovery. And as international travel resumes again, they're sure to become a key demographic segment alongside others such as millennials and silver travelers. My name is Sienna Perulis Cook and I'm Dragon Trail's Director of Marketing and Communications based in London. It's my honor to introduce our guest speaker for today, Liu Tingting, Inter uh, Director of International Partnership at Ma Fang Wu. Tingting. <laughs> Hi. Um, thanks for joining, Tingting. Uh, Tingting has been at Ma Fang Wu since 2014 and has worked with more than 150 global destinations and tourism brands from around the world, including airlines, hotels, uh, automobile companies, and many more. On our agenda today, I'm going to start by first taking a big picture look at generations in China and um, the size of the Gen Z market for domestic and international travel. Next, to give us a deeper understanding, we'll look at some of what differentiates uh, China's Gen Z travelers from millennials and older Chinese travelers, as well as some of the key differences between this generation and their Western peers. Then I'll introduce some of the biggest travel and cultural trends for this generation, as well as data on where they get their travel information and a couple of examples of travel marketing that is clearly targeting the Gen Z market. Then I'm going to turn over to Ting Ting to share insights on trends and features of the Gen Z market from Ma Fangwa's data and research, as well as examples and suggestions for effective travel marketing. We aim to do around uh, 45 or 50 minutes of presentation today, and then time permitting at the end, uh, we will have time for a short Q&A session. So please feel free to send in any questions that you might have at any point during the webinar by using the Q&A button on your Zoom control panel. And we will try to answer those at the end um, or can always get back to you by email as well. We will be recording today's webinar session, and tomorrow we'll send you a link to a recording of the session as well as the uh, PDFs of the slides that we're sharing today. So you'll have all of that information for future reference as well as to share with any colleagues who you think might be interested but weren't able to attend the live session today. Before we get started, just a few words about Dragon Trail International in case you don't know us. We are a marketing solutions company headquartered in Beijing with two other offices in China as well as one in London. Since the company's founding in 2009, we have focused particularly on digital marketing for outbound travel from China with services including social media management, web and mobile development, content creation, including video, B2B training and engagement with the Chinese travel trade, virtual events, research, and more. You can find more information about the services that we provide, as well as case studies of our work with and beyond the travel industry on our website, www.dragontrail.com. So let's get to know China's Gen Z. Uh, in China, although the terms millennial and Gen Z are used in some reports and articles, generations are more commonly defined by decades or half decades. So the post 80s generation was born between 1980 and 1989, for example. This in the early post 90s generation lines up roughly with the age span for millennials in the West. And in the years leading up to COVID, they were the largest and highest spending outbound travel demographic. What's coming next, however, is Gen Z, the post 95s and post 2000s generations. Some of this generation is still too young to be traveling and spending independently at this point, but the older, uh, certainly the older Gen Zs now in their early to mid 20s are already an important market. 
As you can see, with declining birth rates in China since the 1970s, this generation is a bit smaller, but smaller families also means that they're likely to have more financial resources. And as we'll see later on, the younger the generation, the earlier they start traveling. So while they may be fewer in the overall population numbers, there's still a very significant tourism demographic. China's younger travelers are also the fastest growing group with post 90s and post 95s already starting to surpass post 80s in terms of outbound travel in 2019. While there hasn't been any outbound tourism beyond Macau since the start of the pandemic, home sharing platform 2GIA has reported that by 2020, millennials and Gen Z travelers made up 78% of China's travel market. So here we can see the numbers from China's largest OTA, Ctrip, AKA the trip.com group, um, as well as those numbers from the largest home sharing platform. Now these are services that might disproportionately attract younger users. However, data from the China Tourism Academy and China's Ministry of Culture and Tourism that you can see here is actually very similar, showing that 28% of Chinese outbound tourists in 2018 were aged 24 or younger. Since the pandemic began, younger travelers have been key to China's domestic tourism recovery, accounting for more than half of the bookings on sea trip for the 2020 May Labor Day holiday. Last summer, travelers under 30 made half of all flight bookings on OTA Chunar and close to one third of hotel bookings. Then during this year's May holiday, just a few weeks ago, the younger post 2000 segment showed significant growth compared to before the pandemic with bookings two and a half times higher than in 2019. So we can see that the segment is really starting to come into its own. So what sets Gen Z travelers apart from older Chinese travelers and the youth travel market in other countries? As we'll see with generational comparisons, it's not so much that someone born in 1995 is going to be completely different from someone born in 1994. It's more about long-term gradual trends that take a while before you really start to see the major contrasts. <clears throat> so here's one good example of that. Because of the extraordinary growth, <clears throat> excuse me, in China's outbound travel market from the end of the 1980s, um, or end of the 1990s rather, um, until the COVID-19 pandemic, that meant that the younger the generation, the earlier the average age when they first traveled outside of China. And not only were younger travelers traveling overseas earlier, they were also traveling more often in general, with around 58% of Gen Z travelers going on leisure trips at least twice a year, which is much higher than for older age groups. Of course, the pandemic will probably throw off this trajectory for outbound tourism for a few years, but there are already many Gen Z travelers who have been abroad and are likely to start traveling this way again in the future when it's possible to do so. Another pattern is around internet use, particularly mobile internet. While the post 80s generation probably had to use internet cafes to first get online, now more than 60% of post 2000s have their own mobile phone by the time they're in middle school. Post 95s account for more than 19% of China's internet users, and they're the most active generation of internet users with 72.6% of them accessing the internet by a mobile device on a daily basis. They also have the highest average screen time at over five and a half hours each day. What this means for the tourism industry is that digital resources and marketing and particularly mobile friendly resources are only becoming more important over time. In terms of reasons for traveling, we can see from survey data that while leisure and shopping are pretty important at any age, they're less important the younger the traveler is. Conversely, traveling to explore one's interests becomes more important for each generation. China's Gen Z is very passionate about their personal interests and activities that can nurture these. This survey of Chinese Gen Z travelers was conducted more recently after China's COVID-19 crisis was already over. So it's very up to date. Here we can see that relaxation is the key motivation to travel, followed by self-improvement and broadening one's horizons and experiencing other cultures. At present, this seems to be driving travel to China's Western regions, but in the future, it's sure to impact outbound travel as well. 
Personal interests, including TV and film, have a bigger impact on Chinese Gen Z travel behavior than for other generations. We can see some really significant generational differences here in the survey question about sources of travel inspiration, um, with younger travelers much more likely to say that they follow idols and KOLs, TV and film and reality shows for their travel inspiration. I do wonder to what extent the answers to the survey question were influenced by the fact that the oldest post 2000s were only 18 years old at the time the survey was done, but we have continued to see TV and film have a major impact on domestic youth travel in the past year, as well as an impact on engagement with social media content from overseas tours and boards. So this clearly is a major trend. I do think that there are actually a lot of similarities between the way young and millennial Chinese travel and these generations in other countries. But there are also some important differences, particularly in digital behavior. To compare with other countries, I'd like to share some findings from a 2019 SCIFT report on millennials and Gen Z. This report lumps the two generations together, but I think the contrast between China on one hand and the US, the UK, and Australia on the other hand are really interesting. First, Chinese respondents were much more likely, twice as likely almost, in fact, to follow travel-related accounts or influencers on social media, which is very valuable information for travel marketers to know. Second, the social media platforms used to access this travel content are totally different for China compared to the rest of the world, with Weibo the most popular, WeChat very close behind, and short video platform Douyin in third place. Back in 2019, young Chinese were also more likely to say that they plan to increase travel spending and less likely to say that they plan to decrease travel spending than these other nationalities. This is actually not something that's likely to change post pandemic either. China's economy has fared much better than other countries in the past year and young Chinese have actually increased their travel spending domestically. In 2020, a study by Euromonitor showed that travel was one of the top five things that Chinese consumers aged 20 to 34 plan to increase their spending on. So the appetite for upgrading and increasing travel is definitely still strong. In terms of travel booking, it's unsurprising that nearly all Gen Z travelers uh, do their travel booking online, mostly through OTAs. Young Chinese also take pride in doing all of their travel bookings independently, allowing them to customize their travel to fit their individual interests and show off their capabilities as travelers. Booking device was another major contrast between Chinese and Western Gen Z and millennials in SCIF's research with 84% of Chinese saying that they book travel only or mostly on a smartphone. This corresponds with the high mobile internet use of young Chinese and another reason why it's so important to have mobile first resources and booking platforms for Chinese visitors. Now let's learn more about travel and cultural trends for China's Gen Z and where they go to find travel in, uh, information and inspiration. I think the biggest overall travel trend for the generation born in the 1990s, especially is DACA. DACA literally means punch card and it's a kind of check-in style travel that's tied to online sharing. You go to a must visit place, then post photos or a video online to show off that you were there. This has really taken off and become very mainstream. The term DACA is now used constantly in tourism marketing content and industry reports. DACA destinations can be famous places like Tiananmen Square or the Eiffel Tower. They can be so-called internet famous places like a pop-up shop or an art installation, for example. Or they can be trendy places that are tied to the traveler's personal interests, including theme parks, bookstores, and cafes. DACA can also add a ritual experience to travel, the kind of social media equivalent of collecting Starbucks mugs or magnets from different cities that you visit. In some ways, DACA seems like a throwback to the old fashioned kind of Chinese tourism that's all about checking off the major sites and taking a photo there. But I think what's different about it is that it's very social media oriented, very Instagram worthy in terms of aesthetics, and it's often influenced by personal interests. So one traveler's DACA list should, could be quite different from another's. 
I'll let Ting Ting present more about the kinds of travel activities that are popular now with young Chinese, but I do want to mention a few of them briefly here. One is theme parks, which are undergoing huge growth in China right now, and Shanghai Disneyland in particular has emerged as one of the country's most popular destinations and a Dakar hotspot. While you might imagine Disneyland to be more for families, according to a China Tourism Academy report released just last week, nearly half of visitors are aged between 20 and 30 years old and visit without children. The pandemic has pushed interest in outdoor activities and independent travel to new heights, and glamping and camper van travel have emerged as a major trend, made especially popular by KOLs. During the Labor Day holiday earlier this month, Searches for camping on Xiaohongshu, which is a social media platform dominated by women born in the 1990s, were up by 230% compared to the year before. Another trend, and one that relates to outbound tourism, is cloud travel. This is a way to simulate the travel experience online, notably through live streaming and video, and it emerged during China's lockdown period last spring, with broadcasts and tourism events streaming from within China and all around the world. It's worth mentioning here that the peak time for internet use for Gen Z in China is from 6 to 9 p.m. And the second biggest peak time is after 9 p.m. China's Gen Z has grown up during a time of extended prosperity and ongoing development, and they tend to be confident in and proud of their country. We can see the popularity of Hanfu, or traditional Han Chinese clothing, and branded cultural products like these ice cream pops designed to look like historical attractions. These ice cream pops were a huge trend over the recent May holiday, and they lend themselves very well to social media, as you can see from the pictures here. While these kinds of things might seem specifically Chinese and inward looking, I think there's no reason that an ice cream that looks like Tower Bridge in London or the Sydney Opera House wouldn't also become an online sensation for visitors from any country. And there are lots of great attractions and events around the world that feature people dressed in traditional costumes that can be effectively marketed. So these include, for example, the mock traditional weddings in Serbia that were already a huge hit with Chinese tourists pre-pandemic, or kimono hire in Japan, which was another pre-pandemic Chinese tourism trend. Another thing that's important to know about if you're targeting the Chinese youth travel market is graduation travel and study travel. The peaks for student travel are Chinese New Year, when students get a break of around one month, and June, when the academic year ends. Graduation travel is when students travel with family, friends, or classmates to celebrate their graduation from high school and university. This tends to be domestic or short-haul travel to nearby Asian countries, but long-haul destinations can get some Chinese graduation travel too. For those still doing their studies, study tours are typically around a week long and involve some tourism and some study, with long-haul destinations known for their educational institutions more popular here. Looking at some of the ways that COVID-19 has impacted the way young Chinese travel, it's made FIT and small group travel even more popular than before, accelerating an already prominent trend among younger Chinese. Last summer, natural scenery was the most popular feature of a destination among China's Gen Z travelers, reflecting early post-pandemic travel trends. But historical and cultural destinations were also popular. As we've seen, young Chinese have played a big role in domestic tourism recovery and are, enthusiastic about, and are very enthusiastic about their own culture and history. Plans for outbound travel have naturally dropped off considerably. I think a major question for destinations and brands outside of China is, will this be a long-term trend? Should we expect post 2000s Chinese to be less enthusiastic about traveling abroad than the post 80s generation was, even when the risk of COVID infection has been eliminated through vaccines? I think the answer to this question is at least partially up to tourism boards and tourism businesses outside of China. If we continue to look for fresh ways to inspire and welcome young Chinese travelers and do so effectively with the right digital channels, creative content, and peer recommendations through KOLs and user-generated content, we can play a big part in enticing this generation to explore the world, which I think is a very positive thing for us all. So on that note, let's look at where and how to reach them. 
Social media is one of their most used sources of travel information alongside OTAs. And the good news is they're on the same social media platforms that you're probably already using for Chinese marketing. The Communication University of China found that WeChat and Weibo were the two most used social apps for Gen Z by the end of 2020. According to one 2018 report on Post95's internet use, this generation is actually more likely to follow official accounts on WeChat and Weibo than older Chinese. Douyin is by far, by far their most used short video app ahead of Kwai Show, and they're also more likely than older generations to watch videos on Bilibili or Weibo. If you're looking for more information on Chinese video platforms for tourism marketing, please have a look at the recording of last month's webinar on the Dragon Trail website, or email me directly for the slides and more written information on the topic of video marketing. Last year, the Copenhagen Tourism Board published this really interesting report that was based on a survey they did of Chinese university students in the UK, asking them about their travel around Europe. The results that you can see here show very clearly that while Chinese students uh, show very clearly that Chinese students continue to use Chinese platforms to find travel information, even when they're outside of China. Um, and here we can see that May, uh, Weibo, Mafanghua, and WeChat were the three most prominent online sources of travel information. I think this is particularly relevant now, since students are going to be traveling overseas earlier than tourists are. And once they've arrived in their destination country, they'll be free to travel according to the rules in that country or region. They will also then play a very important role of being some of the first Chinese to be traveling internationally after the pandemic abates and lockdowns are lifted. So their word of mouth recommendations and online posts will have a bigger impact than ever. Finally, I wanna wrap up by sharing two travel marketing campaigns aimed at China's Gen Z that I think touch on a lot of points previously shared. The first is this campaign by Marriott that was published this March through their official account on WeChat. The post promoted city breaks and launched a competition that you entered by telling them your recommendations or wish list for Dhaka destinations in a Chinese city of your choice. I really love the artwork in this post because it taps into the diversity and individuality of young Chinese. You can see, starting from the left, these street style kids in a famous Dhaka destination in Macau. Then we have a young man in a trendy Beijing bookstore. And then finally, a young woman dressed in Hanfu in a classical Suzhou garden. The tagline for the campaign is about new ways to enjoy travel and explore interesting places. This campaign was launched last summer by the Qingdao Municipal Tourism Board to promote travel to the Eastern city of Qingdao. There was a creative and interesting music video shared online, as well as an interactive H5 checklist of Dhaka places and activities in Qingdao. You can see that in yellow on the right. The H5 was optimized for mobile and users could create a profile and then check off things that they'd done. This gave recommendations for attractions, shopping, and dining in a way that was interactive and incentivized by a public leaderboard, as well as different titles or badges that you earned based on the number of things that you duck had. Uh, so on that note, um, that's it for my part of the presentation. And I'd now like to turn things over to Liu Tingting from Mafanghua for an in-depth look at travel trends for the Gen Z market. Thanks, Sienna. Good afternoon, everyone, and it's great, great pleasure to have this opportunity to share some insights of Generation Z, the youngest generation now. Uh, and I'm Mona from Mafongwu. Uh, okay, I'll share my screen with you first. Zana, can I uh, can my screen be seen? Yes, I can see it. Good. Okay, so uh, first please uh, allow me to introduce a little bit about my company. Uh, Mafungwe is uh, leading uh, travel social network in China. Uh, and we provide one-stop service from information to booking uh, to Chinese travelers 
And uh, to the younger generation, we have our special position, uh, like we are always regarded as uh, fashion lead uh, of the travel and the best tour for traveling in style. Um, so uh, next, I'll show you some data about the company. These are the services we provide to our travelers. So we including all kinds of contents and uh, travel products. And to the young, younger generation today, we are like a preferred website and the Bible of traveling, uh, blah, blah. And we now have uh, over 130 million travelers. And these travelers are mostly like post 90s and uh, uh, post zero zeros. And they got uh, very high potential and then they are like uh, of good uh, consumption powers and they travel more frequently than the elder generations. And we now have contents uh, covering more than 60,000 destinations and more than six, uh, 63 million POIs. And we hope that we can uh, co-build a super travel content platform with our users. Um, so uh, since today we are uh, talking about the Generation Z, so next uh, I will start from the strong rebound uh, of Chinese domestic traveling, and also during this period, how the generation Z had behaved. Uh, we have actually experienced um, torturous road of the release of travel demands. The pandemic started uh, in 2020 January in China, uh, in China, and during January to March, all the regions in China had a very uh, strict lockdown policy. Uh, hotel and attraction closed, airline canceled, uh, people barely traveled during this time. And this situation lasted to uh, May. Uh, China has controlled the uh, domestic situation and both the new cases and death rate almost uh, dropped to digits. So we have witnessed the first small rebound in May Day holiday 2020. Uh, then the number of travelers kept growing during the whole summer till October. And on the national holiday uh, in October uh, reached a peak. However, as the uh, winter comes, the weather turned cold and uh, lots of places have new cases reappeared. Uh, so this travel heat had been cooled down again. And the Chinese New Year uh, usually is the most crowded season for traffic, but for the um, Chinese New Year in 2021, in order to reduce the possible gathering and the uh, transmission, the government actually encouraged uh, all the individuals to celebrate the Chinese New Year where they are. So most people, uh, they choose to stay and not go into travel or visit their families, relatives in other places. So it again became a low season of travel. And in February, the domestic cases returned to zero again, and people start to travel again. And in this uh, recent May Day holiday, uh, the travel demand were to a large extent released. Number of travelers has exceeded May Day holiday in 2019, uh, reaching 230 million. Uh, bookings of uh, b and -Bs also has exceeded uh, 2019, and the uh, average consumption has risen up to 50%. Um, for Generation Z, actually they travel uh, more frequently uh, and they love this walk and go travel. Uh, they also pursued quality experience uh, and uh, most of them uh, shows that they will not lower down their travel budget after the pandemic. And also they love this checking uh, kind of travel, which is mentioned by Sienna before, and they love sharing this on different platforms. So after the pandemic, people care about more about like uh, health and safety. Uh, those who usually travel abroad on holidays now also have to choose domestic destinations to spend their holiday money. So the high end bookings reached 86% from 2020 to 2021 as a result. 
And the top five popular experience among Generation Z is uh, RV and camping, RV and camping, and uh, outdoor hiking, low altitude fly, high end accommodation, uh, and water activities. Hainan Island uh, becomes the most popular travel destination due to its uh, tropical island beauty, multiple choices of activities, and duty free policy. Um, and in recent years, um, as young tourist recognition of traditional Chinese culture continues to increase, uh, cultural experience has become an important part of their tourism consumption. In 2020, the proportion of orders of tickets uh, for those uh, cultural attractions increased 11.3% uh, year on year. And among them, the proportion of ticket orders for Asian towns with outdoor sightseeing experience increased by 21% and the proportion of ticket orders for attractions such as Asian walls, doors, buildings and towers rose by 9%. However, uh, museums, art galleries, exhibition halls and other attractions that are dominated by indoor activities have been affected by the pandemic and have adopted um, measures such as closures and current restrictions. So the proportion of ticket sales throughout the year has decreased slightly. The data shows that the top two museums uh, with the highest domestic tourism popularity uh, in the first quarter of 2021 are from Shanxi, namely Terracotta Warriors, uh, which is very famous, and the Shanxi History Museum. And in addition, Henan Museum, Hunan Provincial Museum and the National Museum also entered the top five on the list. Um, and among the museum-related tourism products, in-depth explanation uh, have become a new type of tourism product that has emerged uh, since the pandemic. In fact, we have, uh, on our platform, has previously cooperated with high-quality merchants to launch museum in-depth explanation tourism products with richer uh, explanation content and longer visit time. So starting from the second half of uh, 2020, the museum will gradually open and uh, these products are more popular with tourists. Generation Z, uh, they love to explore niche destinations and their travel demands are always more personalized. A lot of uh, cities which are not typical travel cities before the pandemic are discovered. Uh, like Aba, Jiuquan, Maoming, Danzhou, and uh, Zhoushan. Those are uh, the top five most popular ones. Uh, and there are also lots of attraction uh, which had few visitors now, uh, are, uh, which had fewer visitors before, now are rediscovered and became popular ones. Um, under the influence of this pandemic, uh, Generation Z has um, had a relaxed attitude when travel domestically, but is cautious about outbound travel. In terms of uh, domestic travel, nearly 30% of people will not plan ahead. Um, people who are willing to plan domestic travel two weeks to one month in advance have less changes than before the pandemic, accounting for almost uh, 46%. But in terms of uh, outbound travel, the proportion of people planning uh, six months or more in advance has increased uh, significantly, ac accounting for almost 45%. And data shows that most of the uh, Z generation are very cautious about travel decisions due to the impact of this pandemic. And after this pandemic, the most anticipated way of travel is self-driving tours with more advantages in safety, privacy, and freedom. Um, and accounting for 56%, followed by island tours and museum themed tours. Um, and the data shows that regardless of before and after the pandemic, safety and health are the top priority factors for Generation Z to choose um, hotels and uh, followed by convenient transportation, um, price and landscape. And in terms of uh, dining options, before the uh, pandemic, uh, people prefer to experience local specialties and snacks. 
and there was no obvious requirement for, for the dining environment. After the pandemic, people's requirements for the catering environment have increased significantly, and they're more inclined to choose chain brand uh, catering with high cost performance and uh, formal service. Um, a large part of uh, China's Generation Z groups are the only children in the family. Um, so uh, they enjoy the treatment of uh, like all the stars holding the moon, uh, this kind of treat in the family. And they often have the um, certain right to speak for the family consumption. So compared with other groups, uh, they're lonelier and more independent. In terms of travel companions, data shows that Generation Z has the highest proportion of outings with friends, accounting for 64%. And at the same time, uh, they show a very like home care side. Um, and the proportion of traveling with family members ranks second at 54%. And uh, in addition, the Generation Z after the age of 18 has a significantly higher proportion of one person travel, reflecting the independence of this group. Uh, and the development of night tourism is closely related to, it, to the growth of this young uh, generation. Um, they love this night experience. Night tourism, which is popular among these young people has shown uh, amazing momentum for development with the participation of travelers born in the 95s and even uh, born after the 2000s. Uh, according to the data, the post 95s generation is the most popular group of people who like to go out at night. And more than 72% of the interviewees indicated that they would plan the itinerary for night out uh, during their travels and followed by the post 90s and the post 00s. 63% uh, um, and 60% of the response indicated that they would go on night tours, although the proportion of night tourists in post 85s and post 80s groups is slightly lower than that of younger groups. It is also like over 40%. Uh, it can be seen that night tourism as a new form of tourism uh, has been widely recognized by mainstream tourist groups and has considerable room for the development. Um, so known as the city that never sleeps, Shanghai has opened its nightlife festival in June this year, uh, in last year, 2020. It has both uh, pure, te pure techniques um, acoustic optic technology, drone show, and some fashion shows, um, making it the most, of the most popular domestic night destination for young, uh, young generations. And in addition to the familiar night tour of Hongpu River, night market shopping, and Disneyland night fireworks uh, show, uh, also are very popular checking places for night tours in Shanghai. And uh, two newly rising night tour cities, Chengdu and Chongqing, are also on the list. It can be said that uh, each has its own cyberpunk, uh, ranking second and second, second and third respectively. Um, and uh, under the pandemic, it is difficult to make outbound travel, uh, but it does not affect tourists yearning for uh, foreign night travel. The data shows that Thailand, Singapore, uh, France, the United Kingdom, and Japan are the most popular overseas night travel destinations for Chinese tourists. And income level also affects people's choice of night tours. Uh, urban white collar workers with a monthly income of more than 20,000 yuan, like um, they prefer like stargazing, camping, and other wild luxury experiences. However, those who have not yet graduated or have just stepped out of campus with an income of about 2,000, 3,000 yuan each month, they prefer the city night wheel. Um, and uh, here are some more insights of Generation Day's travel, traveling, travel habits. Um, 
short content and the live broadcasts are more popular among this young generation. And uh, more than 87% of generation Z will set up a master checking location and uh, prepare before uh, the trip. And the cultural influence like film, reality show, animation has great influence on their choice of destination. And they have strong consumption power and are willing to spend more on traveling. Um, and the more than 64% of the interviewees said that they would take their friend's recommendation to choose a destination. And the others said they will look for the information uh, on the social networks uh, or the online travel platforms like Marfon Wall. Among all the uh, foreign cities, Southeast Asian cities such as Thailand, uh, Japan, Malaysia, and Vietnam, which have lower prices and shorter travel time are more popular with Generation Z. Uh, Bangkok and Tokyo rank the top two on the list. And uh, at the same time as an island holiday destination, Bali Island also received high attention and ranked third. So um, we probably still need more patience uh, and time for they bought to open and uh, people can actually travel abroad. So what we can do uh, during this period, uh, I would give some suggestions to you too today. Uh, I, would that, I, I would say that keep communicating with the Chinese travelers is very uh, important. In 2020 and 2021, we have helped more, more than 30 uh, tourism board live streaming on our platform. Uh, Korea, New Zealand, West Australia had done a series of live streaming in different themes. Uh, travelers' enthusiasm and desire are still strong, and watching live streaming of destinations can always reawake uh, their passion in the destination. Um, the hard part of the the hard part for a destination to do a live streaming is usually uh, who can be the host of the live streaming. Uh, we have tried actually many different types of hosts. Uh, for example, local Chinese guides who live and work in the destination, Chinese professors or KOL who live in the destination and so on. Uh, one of the most popular hosts is uh, this James from West Australia. Uh, he's a native Australian who have studied and lived in China for a few years and can speak very fluent Chinese. So his uh, live streaming on my phone is followed by lots of fans and each of his live streaming can achieve more than 300,000 likes. Um, so live streaming for now is still one of the best communicating forms uh, for people to get to know a destination uh, when they're not allowed to actually go abroad. And the other showcase I would like to share today is an online study tour camp we have done with the Singapore Tourism Board. Uh, because of the pandemic, online study is well accepted by most parents and children. Uh, Singapore is a destination which positions itself as one of the ideal places for parent and child travel. So during this special time, we turn the offline uh, winter camp into an online version. And this is a combination of travel and ed education, and as well as uh, uh, cross-border cooperation between among uh, official tourism bureaus and uh, media platforms and study tour organizations. Um, stakeholders, including uh, Singapore Zoo, uh, Singapore Botanical Garden, and uh, Sintosa World, SEA Ocean Park became partners. They have rec recorded and produced some video clips um, with explanation and uh, interaction. Uh, our third party partner, Qixing, which is a professional camp education institution, helped us to structure this video content into a series of courses. Uh, each video had leave a few questions for viewers to answer and also will post a small task, like paint your favorite animal um, to those children. And these contents are released both on Mafumo and on Qixing uh, education platform for free. As the first case of online study tour camp, the cooperation also includes uh, KOL content creation. This is 
looks like, and it includes lots of videos. 大家好，欢迎来到我的频道《Lando Travels》，要开心要好玩要看帅哥，跟着我就对了。嗯、um, ，So as the first case of uh, uh, online study tour camp. Uh, the cooperation also include KOL contents creation, uh, cross-border pro promotion, and some PR articles on other media. So many parents have show uh, have shown their interest in this kind of content and watch videos with their children together. And these are the paintings done by the kids and uploaded by their parents. Um, we have got over. Six million video views and more than a、uh, hundred thousand unique、uh, viewers. Those are very successful promotion cases during the pandemic.、Uh, the greatest significance of communication is to allow these travelers、um, to always maintain interest and enthusiasm for the destination. At the same time, use the time to、uh, continuously. Uh, increase and update their knowledge and understanding of this destination, breaking and uh, uh, inherent, breaking the inherent、uh, impression. Uh, and uh, uh, when the pandemic is truly over,、uh, when they can actually travel, these people might、um, become the first groups、uh, who may walk into this destination. So,、uh, for the last part. I would like to give some tips for future travel marketing.、Uh, I believe that for overseas destination recovery, the marketing process should be divided into at least、uh, four stages. Stage one is、uh, before there is any accurate sign or policy of opening the board.、Uh, what can be done in, in this stage include including like live streaming,、uh, launch some online topic discussion. Uh, and uh, we have also prepared some special ads packages for destination recovery. If you have good contents or videos and wants to get more impression attention, and the second stage is that when there is a certain date or time, both parties can open the border and start traveling.、Uh, what need to be done before this? I think maybe at least three months ahead of this is to upgrade、uh, all the information. Because after the pandemic, all the information is new to travelers.、Uh, what are the requirements of the visa, and、uh, what are the changes of the transportation? What are the requirements of、uh, checking to a hotel, or maybe do I have to、uh, book tickets、uh, in advance for an attraction? So those are all the information, or all new information to these travelers. Um, and all need to be updated. And third stage is that a pioneer group, including maybe professionals, editors, KOLs, should be invited to the destination and use their influence to show travelers it is safe and convenient to travel now. And the fourth stage is to encourage more average users to go and generate contents.、Um, also, some incentives、uh, should be given at this stage. For example, when Macau is reopened to mainland China,、uh, Macau Airlines has the policy of buy one get one, and most hotels has different discount policies.、Um, the most powerful discount is up to fifty percent off, and the free cancellation policy is also very important、uh, to most travelers, and this will help boosting the travel.、Uh, so that's basically my sharing today, and、uh, hope some of the points. Uh, will be meaningful to you, and、uh, thanks again for your attending and listening.